Uh, these things we do a little bit of, uh, you know, hanging, talking. Um, should I play some bass for a minute? Yeah! yeah. It's kind of fun to do the bass just because it's kind of been with me since I've been like 11 years old. And, uh, you know, I got into rock and roll. Uh, the pastor's son was actually the long-haired guy in town that drove the school bus, and he was cool, and he turned me on to rock and roll. Those of us, you know, from years back, uh, you know, there would be all, you know, you'd start some fanzine called, you know, Metal Connecticut, and you'd get Metal Mania, and you'd be like, you know, Metal Susie's Metal Magazine, <laughs> more metal than metal, and you know, whatever we call them, right? And they're all over the world, so what we do, we'd make a three-song demo, and we'd send it to everybody. It was like freely giving away songs, because that was how we got heard, that's how we got press in your magazine, and the goal was to get our demos to Europe and all that kind of stuff, so... You know, Dave, one of the things when we were starting Megadeth is those jazz band experiences and playing with all these different people and getting really good and running my Rush Licks and my Maiden Licks and all the cool guys that were around when I was growing up. By the time I met Dave and we got in the room, it was like a blank canvas to write, essentially, my future. That's cool. Um, yeah. You know, kids have kept me young. You know, I mean, you're obviously you got to be a dad and be an adult and, you know, that, especially since I wrote my book. You know, it's my son read my book last month, so he kind of knows the journey that I've been on, you know. So they, for them, they've been on the inside, and it's probably not as glamorous for a teenager on the inside of a rock and roll family because there's a lot of, it's a lot of instability, you know. Um, you know, I got sober in 20, you know, 25 years ago when I was 25, right? Yeah. 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 What's kind of interesting about that is that, you know, at first I was thinking, I remember sitting in my apartment when I was, you know, practicing, we were getting ready to go record Rust in Peace, and I'm getting clean, Now, this first record I made sober, it's like three weeks clean, man, I mean, that's why you hear all that piss and vinegar, you're like, you know, coming off of heroin and all this stuff, but it's like, there, there's that moment going, you know, the lie of addiction tells you, you know, you're no good, you'll never want to do this again, you're nobody, you're nobody without, you know, that's the drug speaking. And then all of a sudden the thought hit me, go, wait a minute, I started playing this thing when I was 11 years old. I didn't know what taste of alcohol until I was 15. I was playing in bands, I was gigging. I was really active as a musician, as a kid, out, you know, working as a bass player long before alcohol touched my lips, you know. It really was a turning point for me to kind of hit the, you know, it not being reformed, being restored, because there's a difference, you know, sort of like hitting the, the reset button, it's like, shoot, let's bring it, start over. You why, know? You, why you started in the first place? Exactly, and all of a sudden I realized, man, I can go to the edge, and that's what you hear on Rust in Peace, is you hear a band taking it to the edge, you know, because we were all that music, fucked up on heroin and dark places and strung out and trying to get the band together and falling apart. I mean, it was like trying to wrangle cats, you know. Um, <laughs> no ghost writers, just you wrote all It was yourself. me and Joel MacGyver was my co-writer. And he works at Bass Guitar Magazine UK. And uh, it was nice because he knew Dave's book really well. So it, he really was, had a good sense of... You know, he in Dave's book, he speaks about this. What were your thoughts on that? Or, you know, this, you know, I would say something. He goes, man, that's exactly what Dave said in his book. You know, so our our stories are kind of like the bookends on the fireplot and the mantelpiece. You know, of the, of the Megadeth story with all the little chapters in between.